Neva, who is the only queen on her. You know, um, since we switched, switched to metal straws, like a lot of people have been chipping veneers. Veneers oh, have gone up. You have veneers? Sure. Yeah, a couple. Do you? I do. I have a couple. Of, I have mine are full crowns. Oh, you have so that's just I like went a all in. cap thing, right? Yeah, veneers are like when your teeth are a little ugly. Crowns are when your teeth are falling apart. Oh well, my teeth were ugly. Is that what you're saying, bitch? They were when you just wanted wanted to look a little different. That's the better. Yeah, they were just like little spaced out. They needed to yeah. gather. Um, <laughs> can you floss veneers? Of course you can. You have to. You can get in between them. Mm-hmm. They actually check when you get the veneers done. They're like making sure that there's enough space in between there. I have like some bridges and I can't get between them. Okay, it's that's just a, one big two. That's a problem, girl. Oh my god, did I get bad? I got, I got it on um, Groupon. Yeah, yeah, you definitely. So next week the queen starts. To Hello, everyone. It's me, Bob the Drag Queen. I am your host of the Pit Stop, and today we are going to be reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race All Star Seven Episode Four, and I have the beauty. The gorgeous, the shy town diva, all the way from Puerto Rico. Make some noise for Miss Nacia Lopez. Hi. I said make some noise that we're in studio. <laughs> you guys edit in roaring applause <laughs> and then cut to stock footage of our home audience. <laughs> but make it like really old, like 80s stock footage. <laughs> and if I don't oh, get what I want, <laughs> I'm gonna be a monster. Oh, is this, this is this <laughs> what we're doing this season? <laughs> you recently moved to LA. How do you love it? Yes. Oh my god, I love it so much. Chicago is still my favorite city in the whole wide world. But you have to say that. I, I when you go back. I work there. They'll, so. they'll run you out of town. I still work there. Um, no. Me too. So. I'm like New York is great. I would die. Did I did 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 New York. I have to. Uh, but no, Chicago is still amazing. It's my favorite city in the whole wide world. But uh, the weather alone is reason to kind of just hit it. How do you love the idea of a winter season? I think it's amazing. I think these are contestants that are all very aware of themselves. They mm -hmm. know who they are. So it should be an amazing season. I'm pitching an idea. Drag Race All-Stars, here we go again, again. All girls who have been brought back during their season. I'm talking oh. you. I'm talking Trixie. Uh -huh. I'm talking Shangela. Shangela. Like three times. Yeah, uh -huh. all the Eureka, all the girls who've been yeah. brought back. Okay. Come back again, again. People don't know this. People think that when you came back, you yeah. were waiting in the hotel. No, that was not it at all. I I went all the way home. Like yes. that was something that happened very last minute. I made it all the way home. I was home having some wine and I get a call. I'm like, oh, it's, it's California. It's like, I think it's them. I hadn't even been home three, four hours and they're like, would you come back? I'm like, that is so wild. What? That is <laughs> like, wild. That's insane. Let's talk about this episode, shall we? Let's do it. So last week, Jada Essence Hall and Trinity the Tuck won the episode, but only Jada got a star because Trinity got the Black. And then Jada uses her power to block Jinx Monsoon. Do you think this is smart? I think it's smart to block Jinx the whole season. Like, Honestly? seriously? Like, I mean, super smart, clever, witty, funny. Uh, she's the one to block. Yeah. I think she's the one, you know, to watch out for the whole time. And considering how many times she's been blocked on Grindr, this was so normal. <laughs> she's normal. This it's a normal, normal thing for her. <laughs> she's like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. So Jinx Monsoon on the stage during her critique said that designing was her only weakness. Mm -hmm. And Jada said that's the reason why she gave her the block. Do you think Jinx set herself up by saying that? Yes and no. I, I mean, if you're there and present, regardless whether she says what she said, I mean, it'd be smart to block her. Another thing was our good girlfriend, Monet Exchange, she's kind of going under the radar. She's just staying quiet. She's not bragging about the win. So no one's blocked her, you yeah. know what I mean? So that's kind of a good strategy the there. The time Monet is quiet is on RuPaul's Drag yeah. Because <laughs> I assure you, when you run into this loud mouth bitch out in the streets, Monet's like a lion. You can yeah. hear her roar from three miles away. <laughs> now, the Vivian, yes. Evie Oddly, and Raja do not have stars. Yeah. So I'm feeling like they're getting like a little bit nervous. Yeah, no, as they should. Like, seriously, I I mean, you're in this room with these quality entertainers that, like I said earlier, they're just so 
familiar with who they are and their yep. strengths and they know their strengths. And so it's like, what do we have to do to get, you know what I mean? I feel like they're they're running out of ammo, sort of speaking. Yeah. Like, what can I do? Especially if they're doing well, like Raja, who's doing well, but then doesn't get the starts. You can kind of lose a little bit of motivation, yeah? Yeah, I agree. And Raja's doing, I, I think that Raja got snubbed twice, in my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about something, because you you know that Monet's flying on the radar. Yeah. You're not the only one who's noticed this. So the next day, walk in, and Jada Megaphones. Do you, are you playing video games? Video, I don't. Oh, so Megaphoning is when you're all playing like Smash Brothers, and everyone's Screen, and one person goes, oh my God, Nasha still has four lives. Oh. And then everyone's like, what? And then everyone <laughs> starts targeting Jada. So Jada megaphones Monet. She's like, just so you all know, Ooh. everyone with a star has been blocked except this bitch. Mm. And Monet's like, <laughs> what do you mean? I think Jada's on to Monet's strategy. I think so too. And I, I think too, Jada having a win herself is now having to take attention away from her mm -hmm. and project it onto somebody else so she can kind of get her little gig with the stars too. So you remember Jersey Justice? Yes. So RuPaul, One of my favorites, actually. It was very, very oh. good. Naomi was robbed. Totally. RuPaul walks into the workroom and she says that this week we're doing fairy tale justice. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about the case of the Three Little Pigs and the Big Bad Wolf and Goldilocks and the Bears. Yeah. Do you like this kind of stuff? Listen, there's a, it, it can be done over the top and stupid and it's funny, but sometimes it's hilarious mm -hmm. when done really well. And I think with this group, I think it's going to be done really well and it's they're going to knock it out of the park. What are some of your favorite improv challenges from Drag Race history? Um, I love... <laughs> I love ours, actually. It was kind of fierce. Yeah, it was I really mean, good. And it was one of those toss-ups. I That's Coco's empire everyone else. Yes, and I tell everybody this uh, story. I've told it a few times. We had a script, but Bob <laughs> did improv. Because <laughs> Bob did whatever the f*** he wanted to do. I was just going off. <laughs> yeah. It was so good, though. It was. I mean, you won the challenge. I did ask consent to pour a cocktail on Naomi's head. Okay. I, I Actually, I don't know that I did. I don't think you did. Yeah, I, I think I just did it. That sounds right. That sounds right. Well, she still likes me, <laughs> so... <laughs> love you. Nay, love... Nay, nay, love you. Okay, picking teams in Drag Race. Mm hmm Yeah. This is scary. You don't want to be picked last, obviously. Mm -hmm. But then, also, if you pick someone first, and that person f***s up your entire challenge, that is like, true too. Oh, like, really? That's so, my fault. So Jada and Trinity are the team captains. Yes. So they can't be on the same team, and they mm -hmm. pick people. The first person picked is obviously Jinx Monsoon. Mm -hmm. And the last person picked is Raja. I'm so surprised by that. Are, like, what is that about? Yeah, I feel like I'm just like some sort of like a Raja apologist all of a sudden. Yeah. Because I feel like Raja's doing very well. Yeah. Especially her Snatch Game, for me, I think for everyone it was top three. Yeah. For me, it was top two. Okay. Snatch Game is the ultimate improv. Right. Why would you not pick Raja? Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I think people think Raja is not as good as she actually is. Oh, uh, okay. So Jada's team is Blow the House Down Boots, mm -hmm. which I love that name. Yeah. And then Trinity's team is She Done Already Done Had Her. I don't get it. Huh. It's just the catchphrase. I know. Was there a writer? Was they was there a writer strike in the middle of the episode? <laughs> <laughs> And then Trinity's team is she didn't already and had hers is, which is about Goldilocks. Which one would you have wanted? Uh, Big Bad Wolf for sure. Who would you want to be in there? You would one of the pigs or do a little piggy? Oh no, totally. I would have done the little piggy. Yeah, for sure. Little piggy. Little piggy. Why why does it sound so bad when you said little piggy, you little nasty little piggy? You took it somewhere else, girl. <laughs> I cannot with you. But no, I would have definitely chose that team. So Evie's the only girl on her team who doesn't have a star. Mm -hmm. And remember, we give out up to two stars per episode. So do you right. think playing the wolf will help her get a star? I think it was definitely going to put her more on the running to get it. Like, yeah. yeah being a little pig, I think Jinx would have definitely outsigned her so for dirty. sure. What? Being a little pig. It yeah. So dirty. <laughs> but only you're taking it there. You're, it's because you're that dirty girl. <laughs> Pin, the pig pin. <laughs> oink, oink. Only thing is, this this character might be a little bit too similar to her boogeyman character. Okay, I can see that. Dude. But I mean, if you're if if you got something right, why? If it ain't broke, don't exactly. Fix it. So yeah. I, I think she, I think she's good with it. I think she's good with it. So the other team is passing out roles, and they mention there's a grandma role, and everyone looks at Raja like. <sighs> 
Oh, but you know what? But I'm actually not upset, but I'm like, why does she even entertain the idea? I wish she would be like, no, I, I don't need to play old, you know, every single time. You know what I mean? I like, don't think she's playing. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of set that up, didn't I? I, I totally did. I, I totally just, did. I think it's you, real. You know what I mean, though. <laughs> That's if you're true. comfortable making old jokes about yourself. Yeah. And she was hilarious. She was really good at it. Which is, again, yeah. why was she last? Yeah, totally. Why was she last? Yeah. Make it make sense, you know? It doesn't. All right, let's break down Fairytale Justice. Okay. Which team was your favorite? Three Little Pigs or Goldilocks? Oh, Three Little Pigs, by far. Easy. By far. Like, I cried. Literally, when yeah, <laughs> Jinx and Jesus Christ, when that ear just came <laughs> off, and she's just like, "You're gonna have to speak up!" And oh my God, I was dying. Yeah, we literally rewounded back. Yeah, and we're laughing so hard. Oh my God, so funny. And it was honest. It was because when something like that happens in improv, you can't ignore it because no. in real life, you can't ignore no. that ear falls off. <laughs> so Jinx just screams, "Jesus Christ!" <laughs> And then I love when one actor makes the other ones laugh because Monet starts laughing. It's my favorite thing, actually. Yes, right? when they kind of break character a little bit. Yes, it was. It was. It was. <laughs> Jinx is a brilliant improv. She artist. is. She was in her element for sure. Good thing they gave her that <laughs> plunger. <laughs> yeah, bitch, because she would have went her way to another. <laughs> that was yeah, Jinx. <laughs> She ate that. Yeah, she, she did. She was really the standout for the She did. The, the whole challenge, not just in her group, the whole challenge. I agree. Do you think anyone struggled in this one? Uh, no, I don't think anybody struggled. I think everybody did pretty good. No, I don't think there was a struggle. I just think some people just outshined others. So let's go over to the Goldilocks team. Shay is the mama bear. Yeah. And she's suing Goldilocks. Yeah. When you're given a character like the mama bear, mm -hmm. you don't. You can play it however you want. Right. She could have been a teen mom. Totally. She could have been pregnant with more kids. She could have oh, had yeah. a bunch of little cubs around her. Totally. But she just kind of went for this like super earnest Aunt Viv character. She took the mama role like way too literal. I right. Think. Who do you think stood out from this team? Uh, Vivian. For yes. sure. Vivian. I mean, all the accents. This is, again, another entertainer that's so secure with who she is and knows who she is and was able to, like, execute this so well. Mm -hmm. So she was definitely the standout in this group. She went with it seamlessly. Yeah. It was seamless. Yeah. It is kind of hard to play a liar in improv because improv is about saying yes. Yes, no, no. But the oh, liar yes. says yeah. no to stuff. But somehow they... They just all made it work. Right, it? yeah. Trinity had some really funny moments. Yeah. But it's hard when you're going up against people like the Vivian and <sighs> Jinx Monsoon. Yeah. I think she knew where to take it to because she knows this is not this is not her strength. She's yeah. not a comedian. So yeah. she just was doing enough. I feel, I feel like Monet and Jada also were were like doing fine. It's just gonna be it's gonna be hard in a scene with Jinx Monsoon without oh, clamoring for the spotlight. Can we just talk really quick about Monet? What the f happened to her nose? Yeah, her snout was Her snout wild. was not <laughs> point. Jinx looked stunning with her snout, and yeah, so did Jada. Jada. And then when she came out, I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, what? They clearly didn't bring snouts. Obviously, yeah. And they just did them themselves, and just Monet was like, bitch, I don't know I don't how, how to do, do this. this. <laughs> so before they go to the runway, yeah. the little makeup mirror moments, which by the way, at first I'm like, what is the category? Yeah. Because Jada is in like black and white black, face. Black, white, and then, then there was blood off Trinity of Trinity. has blood. And yeah, it was like, it, it looked dark and gory I thought almost. it was goth or something. Yeah. So Jada's afraid that she's gonna get blocked because in the past, when you win, you get mm -hmm. blocked the next week. Right. So she thinks she's gonna get the Yeah. Of course you're gonna think that that's been the pattern, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But do you think that it's, it's smart to do that or do you think it's smart to like block the person that you think is the most competition, who you anticipate might win the next challenge? That one. Okay, see? But also... Because someone can have a good week. But do you want to make enemies with the strongest competitor? Probably not. Probably I do not envy these girls. No. Let's talk about these looks. <laughs> Category is Spikes on the Runway. Yes. How do you feel about this thing? I was excited to see everyone's interpretation of it because I'm like, this is All-Stars winter season. So yes. this is going to be elevated. We're not just going to see a spike. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was expecting this to be really up there with everyone. What do you think you would have worn on Spikes on the runway? Okay, so I thought of like what, you know, like animal or plants, and I didn't know, but I would have done a porcupine, but that's what one of, somebody was a porcupine, but Jinx was a porcupine. Yeah. However, I would have like somersaulted like in, and like 
popped up and then been the. That would have been fierce. You get what I'm saying? So it's like it would have made more sense instead of just like pooching in a gown with spikes on my. You back. think jeans can do a somersault? Absolutely not. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's look at these garments. Okay. Up first, we have Jada Essence Hall. I absolutely love this look. I love it. I love the makeup, everything everything about this. Head to toe, the only thing, and I think, and you had mentioned it, was I, I, I could have done without the baby hair. Yeah. It's And that's just, that's nitpicking, because that's a hair thing. It's two different hair textures. Maybe it's a teenage hair. It just, yeah. Your hairs have puberty. <laughs> Baby, these aren't baby hairs, yeah, it, mama. And that's just nitpicking. This is teenage hair. It's not baby hair. Baby hair does not go all the way. It's like a little it bit of hair. It's a bang, girl. It's a full these on are, bang. You have bangs. <laughs> it's a Ma full on you bang. Have bangs. That hair, minus the baby hair, is so stunning. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh, I love this. Let's talk about Jinx Monsoon, who mm -hmm. is a porcupine. Yes. I. Love the out of the box thinking, but I just wish it was like executed a little bit differently. But I think the silhouette is gorge. The silhouette is gorge. Yeah. She looks gorge, and I I think it's great. Yeah, she looks good. This, this yeah. is a pretty decent look. I don't particularly understand these white streaks in the wig. Yeah, I don't think that that was a choice. I think that the hair was just kind of like that, right? I feel shady saying this, but I feel like I know for a fact that Jinx just already had this wig. So she just grabbed the wig she had. Think about it, but wouldn't you if you have something? Like, I mean, of course you wouldn't grab this one. Well, no, that one could have stayed. <laughs> but this, well, see, this is the thing. She, she thinks, thinks that. Not? Yeah! <laughs> That's what I was We're here thinking we would never, and she's like, oh, I'm, and I'm gonna put that streaked one on, what? and I'm gonna serve it. Kenny, grab the nice grab wig. Grab the, the good one. And Kenny's like, we got a good nice one? <laughs> Let's talk about Monet Exchange. Yes. I'll let you go first on this one. Okay, so this was one of my favorites. The problem was, I feel like she couldn't walk in it. She couldn't present it. Was it. Something, no, she couldn't sell it at all. And it and it sucks, because it's so gorgeous. This it's is a standstill so garment. Good. Yeah, yeah, this is photo shoot. This is photo yeah. shoot, not a runway gig. But And I'm sure if you go to Monet's Instagram right now, this photo is, this picture is beautograph, beautograph, <laughs> photograph. I'm sure if you go to Monet's Instagram right now, this this image is like photographed beautifully, yeah. but on the runway, it, it looks like it's too heavy. Yeah. And I don't I don't love the mask. Why? For some reason, and the way this outfit is structured, her head looks like this big. Like her head looks so tiny, but not in a nice way. I, I think something about having a big head makes you look nicer. Yeah. Like sometimes I have my boyfriend Photoshop my head a little bit bigger in pictures. No, like that's really a thing. Yeah, I'll that. have him like take my crop my head off and then like you make it bigger, like ten percent bigger, <laughs> and it makes me look smaller. What? Okay, that makes sense. Try it, <laughs> y'all gonna gag. Photoshop your head off, make it ten percent bigger, put it back on, and gag at the results. Gag at the results, <laughs> darling. <laughs> now we have Evie Oddly. I Ugh. love the the odd. Audacity. This is stunning. The nerve. This is stunning. She did a good job. This is stunning. This is stunning. I also didn't know that she, she could walk on heels like that. Yeah, that had to be ridiculously challenging to do. I mean, look how straight like that line is. From yes. Knee all the way to the point of her toe. It is ridiculously beautiful. I don't think you all actually understand how hard it is. Oh, totally. To walk yeah. in heels like this. Yeah. She's on her. Pose. Yeah, this is again photo shoot, and yeah. she turned it into a runway yes. in a good way. And, and the biggest bikes in the runway, love. and a different take on it. Like yeah. I, I, I love this. This was yeah for sure. I agree. I'm next we have Trinity the Tuck. She's a vampire who's been staked through the like, like sternum. It's supposed to be heart. Yeah, yeah. it's supposed to be heart. Um, Which is why she's not dead yet. She's like, I'm still um, good. Yeah, okay. So maybe, maybe, maybe that she actually sense. really thought this through. Yeah, and okay, that makes sense. Not a huge fan of it. Me either. And I mean, I guess a steak is a spike. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's. But then why not call it a spike? And then it's called a. Then she had little spikes on her collar know. too. Yeah, not enough. Yeah, no. This is not. This is. Not, I would. I wouldn't have chosen this route. Also, if you're gonna be a vampire, I feel like vampires they're beautiful, regal, the youth. You know what I mean? No. Drag her. No, oh no. I'm just saying that it's like so dark. Unlike this like, look, vampires are beautiful. <laughs> okay, now I'm hearing it back, and now I'm like, okay, she's not beautiful. That's not what I meant. Well, I think she's going but for you know like what a I mean? classic, like, haunty movie vampire. You're yeah, thinking about uh, thinking... True Blood. 
<laughs> totally. <laughs> All right, up next we have the Vivian. This is our second time seeing a powder pastel cat woman on the runway. Okay, but I still like it. It's like I love great. It. it. It's done like it's done well. It fits well. She looks beautiful. Yeah, this is a great look. She looks absolutely stunning. And those yeah. heels, there's a spike coming down where the yeah. heels should be. Yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah, it's beautiful. That's it's really so beautiful. But the spike doesn't go to the ground. It's like where it's like she's invisible heels. Yeah, because it's the front, you know that. Yeah, but that, it's like it just just yeah. a that is so smart. It's gorge. I know how much you love that whip. Right? Yeah, she kept doing the whip the wrong way. <laughs> she was doing that. That's not how you That's crack not, a whip. Yeah. No. Have you seen that video of Michelle Pfeiffer when she does it? Oh, I once. I think I just turned gay yesterday. Okay, have you seen of it? Of course I've yeah. seen the video of Michelle oh, Pfeiffer. When she does on oh one take. That was one take. It's so fierce. Uh, I'm obsessed. So I, I used to, my, my old drag name used to be Kitten with a Whip. And I used to carry a whip everywhere oh, so I went. This is what that this is what this is about. I used to carry a whip every every outfit had this a matching is what this whip. Is about. And I used to always just whoosh, yeah. Up next, we have Roger. I don't hate this look, but I don't think I understand what's going on. Okay. This part, it just doesn't make sense to I don't, me. I don't know what's going on. But she looks beautiful. She does. The, fa every, it, the fabric, the spike, it's all beautiful. It's just this part right here, it just doesn't make sense to me. If I could just get closer to that area of her body, if I can just get of, my face of right Of course in her you want to get closer to that area. If I can area. get my face in that crotch, yeah. I'd maybe understand a little bit better. I do love the mace. I love the shoulder spikes. Yeah. I like the way that she incorporated. There's also spikes on her head. Her head is one big spike. Yeah. So I think that this looks really good. I just don't, I don't get what's going on down there. Like you could literally take that piece off and it's still stunning and beautiful. I agree. It's not even needed. I agree. Right? Yeah. And let's go into Shea Coulee. I think the only spikes she has are on the train. That's it. And they're flopping over. That's, oh, and her ears are like, like pointy. Pointy. This was, this was not a, a, a hit for me. No. Is to look beautiful? Yes. Is it great for the theme on the runway? No. I want the spikes to be the centerpiece, well, or at least a big part of it. I want to look at it and say, oh, the theme is spikes, for sure. Right? Here I'm getting, like, fashion alien type thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know, Psycho Me Spike. But she looks beautiful, looks stunning. Uh, which one's your favorite? Okay, so I like the Vivian, because how clean and beautiful mm -hmm. that is. But I think my favorite is going to be Evie Oddly. I'm gonna go with Evie Oddly. It's totally out of the box. Mm -hmm. I mean, the heels, the arms that are like the spikes and just how long her body looks and just the way she sold it, the cinched waist. It's beautiful. That's she really my, looks like an alien. Yeah. Truly. To me, she slayed this one. I'm gonna give it actually to Jada Essence Hall. Okay. I love this look. The hair yeah. just really floored me. The makeup. The fact that she took the paint all the way down into her yeah. belly button, I love this look. Okay, so <laughs> the judge critique, and I have to call this out, Ross Matthews always does this thing where he's like, <laughs> you know that thing where you, you go to a, a diner and you say, gosh, I want some cake. So you order cake and then you take a bite and you go, mmm, this cake is so good. So you want more and then you eat more cake, and then you finish the cake. And then you say, waiter, I'll have another slice of cake. So you eat more cake, and you're like, man, this is amazing. And you're really enjoying the cake. You love the cake. So you order five more pieces. And by the fifth piece, you're like, I don't think I like cake anymore. That That's was you. you. <laughs> that is his favorite thing. I do not know what that is. I don't know where that came from. Like, what is that? He always does it. You know that thing? No. <laughs> and it goes to proceed the most specific thing. You know the thing when you go home for Thanksgiving and your uncle Daryl is there and Daryl's been drinking a little bit and Daryl's just sloshing around, just throwing out <laughs> and oh really being an absolute monster. He's hammered, right? <laughs> now Uncle Daryl just stumbles upstairs and just slugs your dad. They're fist fighting. The cops get called, show up, arrest your dad and Uncle Daryl. You know that? That's, That's you. you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> oh my God. After the judges' critiques, we find oh out that the top two queens are the Vivian and Jinx Monsoon. Do you agree? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so Jinx Monsoon and the Vivian are in the top, but Jinx does not get a legendary legend star because she has been locked. 
This is Vivian's first Legendary Legend star. Yeah. Okay, do you think knowing you're blocked, would that affect you going into the lip sync? I would definitely still feel motivated to lip sync, but I, at this point, I would see where Jinx is like, yeah. kind of not feeling. I mean, plus, I mean, did you see the little gang up? When... Okay, so let's talk about okay. it. So the lip sync song is Levels of the Day, remix Whitney Houston. Yeah. They're lip syncing. Jinx isn't doing great, to be honest. Right. The Viv is really giving. And then Jada alley oops a xylophone. It gives her a prop, yes. Out of nowhere, she does a xylophone solo. Cut to Jinx, she is on fire. I mean, on fire. She is big mad. She's pissed. She yeah. is, and she's trying to hide it, but she is mad. Mm -hmm. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if they mention it in story. I don't care if they don't mention it next episode. Jinx is on the, her hair. Oh, totally. The hair wasn't red, bitch. That was fire. The realization that they are teaming up against her had hit her right then and there. Even in the lip sync, bitch, they're alley ooping bitches. Yeah, uh huh. They're like, here, bitch. Yeah, boot, boot this <laughs> is bitch. crazy. <laughs> yes. So Vivian wins the lip sync, which we both agree with, and she gets the platinum plunger, and she decides to block Monet Exchange. Do you think that Jada had anything to do with this? Absolutely. Right? You know how Monet's trying to put it under the radar? Uh huh. I think Jada's actually doing it. For you think real. So? You think that Vivian would block Jada after she gave her an alley-oop for the win on the lip sync? Imagine if I just gave mm. you this alley-oop and then you, then you blocked me. And then you me, blocked me. And then you blocked me? We're <laughs> fighting now. You see what I mean? So yeah. I think Jada's actually playing a mental she's game playing, that yeah. Monet thinks she's playing. Yeah, it's very Roxy Alaska, let me use your shirt kind of Very thing. giving that. Very that. She playing the game, boo. Watch out for it. Jada Essence Hall, honey. <laughs> What do you think is going through Monet's head as the Vivian's walking around with that plunger? Okay, so we talked about Jinx fuming Monet at oh, yeah. that point right there. She's like, mother. She got, yeah, they got her girl. They say vengeance is a dish best served cold. Yeah. Monet will take it piping hot. She'll take it cold. She'll take it lukewarm, frozen. Three days well, later, this eight is what I want to see. Oh, she just this wants. This is what I want to see. She just wants her vengeance. Yes. Oh, can't wait. She's dead ass. I mean, you could tell she was like era for that like second. Like, ugh. but some, but I think that vengeance can give you can like give you blinders in a way that's not good. Like, it'll you'll just start absolutely. You'll start chasing the wrong thing. Yeah. Nisha Lopez of yes. the Lopez Estate. Who do you think is going to win RuPaul's Drag Race All Star Seven All Winners? Based on what's going on right now, I would have to say Jinx Monsoon is the really the one. She's doing very well. I do not think you're wrong. Nisha, thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad I got to do this with you. Where can people find you if they want to uh, watch Drag Race with you or follow you online? You can subscribe to Roscoe's YouTube page mm -hmm. and watch our viewing party every single Friday right after the, uh, the episode. So that's fun. Um, and I'm here in LA now. So um, yeah, if you ever see me, and they can see you in person at Roscoe's too. Yeah, I'm, I'm there every Friday. I perform there as well. And thank you for watching at home. My name is Bob the Drag Queen. And join us next week. And we will be watching RuPaul's Drag Race All Star 7 Episode 5. <laughs>